My name is Jen McCall, and I am a water polo referee. Hi, my name is John Moore, and I was a uh, basketball official for about 28 years. I actually was a high school basketball coach for, uh, I think, about 17 years prior to that. Now I assign the CIF playoffs, and I assign uh, the games down in South Orange County. My name is Jeffrey Taylor. I'm a South Bay area football, basketball, I've done softball, and I've done baseball. I'm a 35-year basketball official for South Bay. I'm a 26-year football official for South Bay. My name is Marianne Menlove. I am the CIF State Rules Interpreter for Girls Flag Football, also the CFOA Instructional Chairman for Girls Flag Football, and I currently umpire high school softball and officiate high school football. It got started through a gentleman named Royce Cooley, who was my mentor. He was, he, he, this is what happened. I played in a basketball game, and I was pretty good at, at basketball, and I was playing in a game, and he was officiating, and I didn't like a call he made. And I, I'm, I was notorious for being on the officials. And I was on his case, and finally, but he knew me since I was a young man, so finally, I guess I frustrated him, but he was frustrated from the night before, and he took the jersey off and threw it at me, and he left. Now everyone's looking at me like, Jeff, what did you do? So I'm like, oh, wow. So first I had to go apologize to him, first of all, because he was, he was a mentor of mine. And I apologized, and he told me, if you're interested in officiating, come to this address Tuesday night. And I went, and the rest is history. Just love watching sports. I just love it. So after a few years of just continually badgering the television for no good reason. My girlfriend encouraged me to become a basketball official and I reached out to a local basketball officiating organization and became involved with them. In my first year of uh, coaching, I think I was about 23 years old, I yelled at one of the officials and they told me to learn the rules. And so I went and grabbed a rule book and I looked and I was wrong. And I thought, my God, if I'm gonna coach this sport, I probably ought to know the rules. So I told the story to one of the varsity officials that year and he said, well, you should come to the meetings with me if you want to and you can learn the rules. And so I always had in the back of my mind, like I said, that if I quit coaching, I would get into officiating. Well, finally, in about 1985, I think it was, um, the coaching ran its course with me. And I got into officiating and it went well and within about five years I had been accepted into the Pac-10 program. I was doing it for extra money and then it became, it just became a passion. I was running tournaments and had become a certified referee um, but never signed up to actually referee a game. And so while I was running a tournament, a referee had an emergency. His wife fell at home and had to leave. And I said, well, I'm a certified referee, so maybe I can go grab some white clothes really quick and ref the rest of the day. So um, did that and the rest is kind of history. Definition of being an official is hard work. Being an official means giving back to the sport that I love. Time. My only job when I step onto any court or any field is to ensure that the players are safe and that everyone gets a fair chance. Rules knowledge. But just being out there and being able to see the 10 and unders, the 12 and unders, you know, learning the sport and kind of getting their feet off the ground with their friends and what I now know that I have lifelong friends from. Mechanic knowledge. Being able to go out and know that I'm serving the sport that gave me some of the best memories and opportunities of a lifetime. And dedication. I want the winner to be the winner and the person who competed the best at that time. And dependability. Those are good words to put in the definition of, a, of an official. Very good words, yes. I get little goosebumps when I think about it. Uh, it's such a special thing to be able to participate with the youth in our communities today. They are amazing, amazing human beings and bring so much to my life with their smiles and their efforts and teach me in ways that I didn't even know were possible. I wanted to be an official because I wanted to I used to, like I told you, I used to be notorious. I used to, oh man, I was on an official. If he didn't call a call for me, I was on him. I was on him. So I wanted to be 
that official to make every call. Then I realized you can't make every call. You can't, you're not gonna get every call correct. People don't understand that we make mistakes and we're not perfect. We feel just as bad when we're wrong or we make a mistake because we know it might cost the team a playoff, a game. It might cost that, uh, if we foul someone out, it might cost, that might be the last time that, that student athlete ever plays. And that's something that it weighs heavy on a lot of us. We're trying our best and um, you know, no one's doing it to spite anybody that we do it because we have the same passion for the sport that the players and the coaches have. Um, but I think referees kind of get the short end of the stick sometimes. A lot of the fans, coaches, players, if they even just come to a class and see what we're learning and see you know, what we go through prior to the season, that would change a lot of the, the negativity we see on these on this new social media outlets. The, the attacking of officials, the berating of officials. There's the times where something weird happens in your game and you know, something, you know, we have rules, but some of the rules we never use because those things don't come up, right? They're for the special moments and those happen in your game and you have to refer back to your rule book and then you remember that play forever and you're like, yep, that's happened to me before and I'm gonna get it right the next time and hopefully it doesn't happen the next time. One thing I, I would wanna tell the youngsters is that, think about officiating after you finish high school. Everyone's not gonna get a scholarship a lot. Everyone's not gonna be able to play the sport that they love beyond high school. So maybe you can officiate that sport and still give your love and passion to that sport you play as an official. One of the most difficult things about our job is that everyone else wants to do our job, but nobody wants to actually step on the field and do our job. I could, you know, do the job of editing this video from my couch at home, but it's not going to be what it would be if a professional's doing it um, the same way that people try to do the work of officials from the stands or from their couch at home. I dedicate probably 300 hours to officiating prior to the season starting, and that was basketball. Football is even more, because I go to officiating clinics, camps, so I spend my own money to go to camps, clinics, to get better. 99% of us, this isn't a full-time job. This is something we do because we love it. We love giving back. It's meaningful in our lives, and it's part of what we want to be and do. I work for the state of California. I worked for the state of California for 30 years. And um, for me, the time commitment, it, it was rough because I was raising two sons. This is a hobby for me. Um, obviously, it's a paid hobby. It's something that I enjoy doing, so we can say it's a second job. Uh, I'm a full-time paralegal, which is a very demanding job um, at a very high-profile firm. So work anywhere from 40 hours a week to 60 or 70 hours a week, given the week, um, whether we're preparing for trial or something. And um, so I always say, like, you know, sometimes we get yelled at during games and people are like, well, this is your job. And I'm like, it's not my job, it's my hobby. And, you know, maybe your hobby is reading out at the beach and no one yells at you when you're reading out at the beach, right? So <laughs> I always, you know, people, people like to compare it to a job and although we do get paid for it, it is, you know, it's something that I like to do and it's fun for me to do and it's fun to walk away from my computer and go and head to the pool decks. My personal favorite part about officiating, and I'll start with basketball, it was amazing that the kids, the respect. At that time when I first started, and I started in the early 90s, 1990, it was a lot of respect toward officials. You might not see it on TV, you might not see it at the professional ranks, but at the high school ranks, there, were, there, were, there was a lot of respect and admiration. I mean, they wouldn't call us official something, they'd call us coach. Right now in my life, uh, being an official means everything to me. It really does, and that may sound grandiose or something, but it means that I have opportunity to give back to my community. Certainly it had its moments of excitement and rush, and uh, it beat watching TV for sure on a Friday night. Um, I had a lot of friends in basketball, and so it helped me stay with the game. Number 26 of the defense. That's a going to get C.J. Lavender Jr., the sophomore. Across all sports across the nation, we're um, very, very short on officials. 
We need officials. Um, we would do everything we can to ease you into the profession. Even if you don't know the game, beyond sitting on your couch on a Saturday afternoon watching, we will teach you the game. We will help you become the kind of official that you would be proud of. When I talk to younger referees or people that think about considering it, um, they're always hesitant, and I was hesitant myself. You know, I, I got certified and then never signed up until kind of hit me in the face one day. Um, so I would say go out and do it. Obviously, I would recommend it for crying out loud. I did it for 28 years. Days are gonna be hard, for sure. And you're gonna walk off the deck thinking I'm never going back, but go back because the next day is probably not gonna be as bad and you're gonna have a good experience and it's gonna be worth it at the end. Officiating is fun, y'all. I, I have this smile on my face every time I step onto a field. I have this smile on my face. Even if a coach is badgering me about something, um, I feel very lucky CIF supports their officials greatly. They give us backing, they allow us freedom and flexibility to call the rules as we see fit at any given moment in time. They allow us opportunity to be educated and teach us how to do our skill and you would get the same from them, I promise you that. Uh, on a Friday night while someone else is sitting at home trying to find a good movie on TV without luck. You're out there exercising and, and maybe working a hopefully a nice game in front of five or six hundred people and uh, walking out of there having done it well and thinking, wow, that was kind of cool. From my perspective and from where I sit, we need more females involved. We would love for you to come join, pick your favorite sport. You only have to pick one. One will help us out tremendously. And then just spread the word. And, and again, it's at the CIF Southern Section website, cifss.org. Don't be shy, um, you know, jump into the profession and we'll do everything we can to ease you along and, uh, but you, you would, Power outage. So, oops. <laughs>